I have the privilege of bringing the word of God today, and I'm going to do that very quickly. My husband gave me a, time, a timer. Hi, honey. <laughs> He's very timely, anyone who knows him. I'm, I'm usually not, so that's okay. But let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for this wonderful day today, Lord, a day where all of your people come together, Lord, and we celebrate each other, we honor each other, Lord, we appreciate these beautiful people that you have created. And God, we ask you, Lord, that today, Father, that you let your word go forward and let it transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As I mentioned my husband before, I just want to give honor to him and thank him for challenging me because he does that very well. He challenges me <laughs> to um, step out of my comfort zone and to do new things. And so it's been a while since I've had the privilege of actually bringing the word. But I thank God. Thank you, Apostle Joshua and to um, Dr. Yane and Elder Tyrone for giving them, me this opportunity. This is a topic that I love. Like, it's one of my favorite things to talk about, anyone who knows me well. I love to learn about different cultures and their way of living, their food, um, those special dishes, and their languages, their customs, their traditions. I tend to think in terms of family and customs and history and patterns and all of those things. But it's so ironic that I would be the one standing here to give this message today because, you see... I wasn't always this type of person who loved everyone. And some of you may or may not share the same testimony to some extent. But just to let you know a little bit about where I'm from, I grew up in an all-black neighborhood. I went to an all-black elementary school. I went to an all-black church. I was raised in a house with 10 people and a little three-bedroom house. All of us were black. And so I didn't have a lot of exposure to people who were not black. But there was one other group of people that I did have a lot of exposure to, and that was Mexican-Americans. Now, you might say, well, what's the connection there? Well, the connection there was that my family, we were field workers. So what we did, we picked fruit, we picked vegetables. We lived here. This was our main home here in Florida. And then for two or three months out of the year, we moved up to upstate New York, and we worked there in the fields. And who was working alongside of us? Mexican-Americans. So I had my black family, my birth family, and then I had mi familia mexicana. They were like my second family. I became really good friends with them. But as far as any other group of people, I didn't really know you existed because I didn't really have <laughs> much exposure, you know, to other people. And so when I moved into middle school and um, upstate New York is predominantly white American, people of European descent, I didn't really like people who didn't look like me or who did not look Mexican. And <laughs> I know it sounds funny, <laughs> but you know what? In reality, it really isn't funny because I had a lot of prejudice. And I'm just going to say it, I actually had a lot of hatred in my heart for people who, you know, who fell into a group who did not fall into those two groups. And that was wrong. But you know what? I thank God for redemption. I said, I thank God for redemption. You know, and sometimes we're not comfortable sharing our testimonies. We don't really want people to know from whence we have come. But what does the word tell us? We overcome how? by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So we need to tell our testimonies. We need to be able to open up and let people know this is what God has done in my life. So now God has taken that hate and all of that prejudice that I had in my heart and he's turned it around and look, I'm here in this church. <laughs> I'm here in this church, a church of many nations, many ethnicities, many people who look like you, who look like me, and I love that. That is a blessing from God. And so we need to appreciate that, 
the opportunity to be a part of a congregation like this one. But our scripture reference today is going to be 1 Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter, verses 4 through 8, and then we're going to jump to verse 13. I'm going to move pretty rapidly to stay within the time limit. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wrong. You mean I can't keep a record of things done wrong to me? Nope. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Let's jump down to verse 13, if you're reading with me. Oh, it's up there. Three things will last forever. Faith hope and love but the greatest of these is love the scripture says the greatest of these is love the greatest of these is what love so you mean the scripture is saying that love is is greater than faith it's greater than hope well i know i read another scripture that says that without faith it's impossible to please god But love is greater than faith? According to the word of God, it is. And you know, the thing that's so important, the reason I read that scripture is because love is the foundation for the kingdom of God. And together we represent uh, that first slide, the title that was on it, the color of the kingdom. But really what I want you to take from this today is that The color of the kingdom is really the colors of the kingdom. All of us together, we make up the kingdom of God. Okay? Amen. So moving right along as rapidly as possible, um, (laughs) I want to kind of let you know about a couple of terms that we hear used a lot in terms of race and culture. Along those particular lines, there are three words, but I'm only going to talk briefly about two. We often hear about the word prejudice, right? We hear about the word racism. And sometimes you hear those words being used interchangeably. But in reality, they have different meanings, okay? So someone tell me, what does the word prejudice mean? You can just yell it out. To prejudge. So bias, anything else? That's pretty much it, right? Okay, so the definition of that word is in the word. To be prejudiced means to prejudge. But in addition to that, there's another part of that. To prejudge before you know the facts. To prejudge before you get to know someone for yourself, right? To prejudge before you have that personal information. But yet and still within the body of Christ, we still have prejudice, We still prejudge one another. Before we get to know each other, we prejudge. We have these ideas in our mind about people who maybe don't look like us, or maybe don't sound like us, or maybe don't do things the way we do things, right? The thing to remember about this word prejudice is that it always, when we're talking about racial prejudice now, it has a negative connotation. So it means that you prejudge someone, meaning that you think something negative about them. So let me give you an example. A coworker of mine, actually she's a friend of mine. We have known each other for about 13 years and she's white American. And we were having a conversation one day and she told me that her thought was that the big issue in our world, in our country right now, is that so many minorities are taking advantage of the system. They want to be on public assistance. They don't want to work. They want to stay on food stamps. I didn't really like what she said. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you what I told her. (laughs) But the thing I... (laughs) I can respect the fact that she was honest. But guess what? That's prejudice. 
That's a prejudgment. It's a generalization. You're putting everybody into one category, saying that all blacks are this, or all Hispanics are this, or all Asians are this, or all whites are this particular way. You know, we shouldn't have that in the body of Christ. We need to deal with that. We need to deal with that. Another example, this same person, she came back to me one day and she proceeded to tell me, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she came back to me one day and she says, <laughs> she says, well, you know, Hispanic people, <clears throat> I'm like, okay, where's this going? <laughs> She's like, Hispanic people, you know, they don't want to discipline their children. They just want to let their kids do whatever. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> and, you know, we laugh about it, but I stopped her and I said, no. That, that is, that's not good. It's not good to think that way. It's not good to say those things. And I try to be patient with her and let her know, look, you know, if a Hispanic person would have heard you saying that, that could have really offended them. You don't want to say things like that. But at the same time, if it's there, I think it's better that you be honest about what's there so that we can have some honest communication and shed light on some of these things. Because a lot of times we're afraid to talk about these things. We're, we are. You know, it's a tense sort of topic and feelings get hurt a lot of times. But within the body of Christ, what is our goal? Our goal is to stand on this foundation of love. So we need to deal with prejudice. Now, racism. What is racism? Okay, well, we know what prejudice is. It means to prejudge. But to be, not, I'm not going to say to be racist, but I'm going to say racism in and of itself. It's something that, it's a belief that another race is inferior to another. Here's the key part about that word racism. It must be embedded in a governmental system, and it has to be upheld by the law. Okay, so here's an example of racism that we experienced here in our own country. And I'm sure that in South Africa, right, apartheid, they had apartheid, and Apostle has been there, and Noah has been there, and probably some of that is still lingering. I think I've heard some of those stories. But I have a couple of pictures up here I just want to show, just to give definition of what that word really means, the true context. Okay, keep going. This is one of the signs that we would see. This was during the Jim Crow era, right? So during the Jim Crow era, these were signs that would be posted about. The next one. The reason I'm showing you these signs is not to evoke any kind of emotion in you. It's just to show you that this was upheld by the law, okay? So it's not just a sign. It was upheld by the law, which means that if you were white and you entered into a restroom that was supposed to be for colored or black people, or if you were black and you entered into a restroom that was supposed to be for white people, you could have serious consequence. You could be arrested. The whole thing about it was that they did not want blacks and whites to mix. Segregation. Is that what God wants? Okay, so this is an example of racism embedded in the government and upheld by the law. Can you repeat that for me? Embedded in the government and upheld by the law. But how many know we live by a higher law? How many know that we follow a higher law? We are governed by a higher law, right? That's the law of God that has been given to us. And that's what we live according to within the body of Christ. Amen. Now, I'm going to skip a lot of things and go down to um, the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is the unsuccessful attempts we have had trying to eliminate this issue or this problem with racial prejudice within the body of Christ. And we're talking about the body of Christ. We're not talking about the world because we know the world, they're not going to live for the Lord. They're not committed to God. They're not trying to follow his laws. They're not trying to live according to his word. But we are. I said we are. We are doing that. We are the people of God. So the first unsuccessful attempt has been just to develop like a colorblind mentality. 
So in other words, we know it's wrong to be prejudiced. We know it's wrong to have those particular things and ideas in our mind and in our heart about one another. Okay, and so in an attempt to get away from that, then what we've decided to do is, okay, we're just going to be colorblind. We're just going to not talk about your culture. We're just going to not um, focus on that in particular. But the answer is not so much of being colorblind because God's not colorblind. Have you looked at creation? The grass is a different color than the sky. The animals of the field are different colors. The birds that fly are different colors. Those in the sea, they're different colors. And that is okay that we are different. My husband and I, we're married and we're totally different. Okay? <laughs> he likes to go fast. I like to go leisurely. <laughs> he, <laughs> he likes the bullet points. I like the paragraphs. You know, he likes spicy food. I like sweet food. We're very different. But we come together and we complement each other. We complete each other. We have a goal in mind. We have the same goal. It doesn't matter that we're different. It doesn't matter that you don't look like me. None of that matters. The thing that matters is that we, is that we come together and to complete the goal of Christ. That is what matters. So you don't have to deny what you look like, who you are, your background, your customs, or whatever, unless they conflict with the word of God. Yeah. If they conflict with the word of God, then yes, we need to leave them behind. Yeah. Because guess what? Your culture does not override the kingdom. Yeah. My culture does not override the kingdom. There are things and customs that were a part of my upbringing. Some of them I had to leave behind. And some of them I got to bring with me because God can use that in his kingdom. God can use that in his kingdom. You know, one of the things I was raised with was this. Okay, so my mom, this is how she raised my sister and I. If you're at school and your sister is in a fight, okay, <laughs> and you stand by and you don't help, when you get home, you're going to get a whooping. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> that's something that I can bring to the kingdom. If my sister here is in a fight and the enemy is warring against her, I can jump in and help. Right? Amen. So some of those things we bring with us, and that's okay. But the key is that it does not conflict with the word of God. If it does, leave it in the past. Leave it in the past. Another unsuccessful attempt to kind of eliminate the whole racial prejudice thing is to just be in denial that anything ever happened, that anything is happening, that anything is a problem, that people's feelings are hurt or not. They should be fine. They should be over it. I'm over it. Why aren't you over it? I'm doing fine. Why aren't you doing fine? But how many know we all move at different rates? We all are at different points. Some of us are back here, and some of us are way there, up there. And that's okay. We are to be what? What does that scripture say? Verse 4 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is what? Patient. Love is what? Patient. It's important that we're patient with one another in the body of Christ. And so... Me denying that you have pain is not helping you get over your pain. You denying that I have pain is not helping you or me in any way, shape, or form. It's like sometimes there's this big elephant in the room. And I'll liken it to being married. So it's as if my husband and I were in the room, we're in the living room, and we want to get close to each other. We want to sit next to each other. We want to hold hands. We want to be side by side. But there's this big old humongous elephant in the room. It's in the way of us connecting. I can't even reach across this big elephant and hold his hand. And when I go and I try to move this elephant myself, it's too big for me to move on my own. 
So what does that mean? The two of us together have to come up with a strategy to move that elephant. And the elephant in the room are the offenses of the past. The elephant in the room is the unforgiveness. The elephant in the room are the things that we don't want to let go of. The elephant in the room are our prejudices. It's time to remove that elephant out of the room. It has no place in the body of Christ. And once we get that elephant removed out of the room, we can have unity. There's nothing standing in the way. You see, I don't have to blame my husband because the elephant is there. Move the elephant. You know what? It's your fault the elephant is there. Why don't you get up and move it? And then he's over here saying, would you do something about this? Instead of working together to find a solution, to come to a solution together. When we do that, we can have unity within the body of Christ. See, if there's a problem within the body of Christ, it's not your problem. It's not my problem. It's our problem. It's our situation. Well, I can't help because you got some personal issues. (laughs) You know what? But your attitude can make a difference in how I get through those issues. So we want unity in the body of Christ. And you know what it starts with? Intimacy. The desire, the goal to be close to one another, to be connected. How do you become intimate with Christ? How do we become intimate with the Lord? You have to talk. You talk to God. You tell him everything, the good, the bad, the things you're proud of, the things you're not proud of. There's nothing hidden. There's no defenses. There are no walls. And so many of us have walls, and myself included. Like, you know, this message is for me also. First, actually. We need to talk. And the goal in talking within the body of Christ, with trying to achieve unity, it's not You are going to understand me, okay? This is my point, and I want to get my point across, and you need to understand what my point is. Why don't you get it? Don't you understand? No. The goal is to be understood, but also to understand the other individual as well. It's to be loved, but it's also to love. It's to be received, but it's also to receive. And so we're just going to do a brief little activity before we close. But I want you to remember that the color of the kingdom is really the colors of the kingdom. And all of us are included in that. You know, when we say that God is holy, that word holy means different. And so together, our differences reflect the creativity of God. Our differences reflect a different personality of God, a different aspect of God. I need you. I need everything that's different about you in my life and vice versa. Because we should be able to see God in those differences. And reflect God in those differences. So I'd like for you to stand up, if you will. And I'd like you, we're just going to take like two minutes or so to do this. I want you to find someone in the room. Before you do, I'm going to tell you what you're going to talk to them about. Two particular things. And no, this is not the end all. It's just an activity to demonstrate what we need to be doing Number one, I'd like you to ask them about a family, one family custom or tradition that they grew up having. And number two, I'd like you to 
ask them what were some of the ideas or the beliefs about race that they got from their family, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And if someone's not very comfortable being open, it's okay. Just remain on the surface for the time being. It's just an activity. So if you would, go find someone who does not look like you. I'll leave it at that. Go find one person who does not look like you. And you're going to talk to them about a family custom. And what ideas about race their family had. So you're talking about one family custom or tradition that they had and one belief or idea about race their family had. One more minute. Ten seconds. And if you could start making your way back. All right, if you could come back. Thank you. (laughs) 
All right, everyone come back. You see what happens? You start talking and you don't want to stop. (laughs) Okay. So, hopefully, you learned something new about someone. Um, If you did not, this is just the start. It was just an example of what we should be doing. And I know I remember, I think it was last year, Apostle even gave us a challenge to go to dinner with someone, right, within the congregation who does not look like us. And so I just want to challenge you again to continue that. Because if we're going to have unity in the body of Christ, we have to converse, we have to talk, we have to communicate. And that's how we create that. So remember, take with you today that we together, we make up the colors of the kingdom. The colors of the kingdom. Amen. There's a song I'd like to sing, and uh, we can stand and hold hands as we sing that. And as I sing that song, I'd just like you to... I was going to have everyone get in a circle, but we'll do it right where we are. Um, I'd like for you just to reflect and just to think about anything that could be in your heart or in your mind or thoughts or whatever it is. It's, it has nothing to do with anyone else. It's between you and God. It's just you and him. It's not for us to judge you or, or vice versa. We're all here in need of God. So just join hands, if you would, across the aisles. And the words of this song are, you're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe who can defeat us. We're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. Okay. You're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe can defeat us. We're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. Keep singing. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hands. Together we will work until we come. Oh, that can defeat us. We're walking side by side. Together we with love, we will stand. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. Keep singing. There's no one that can defeat us. We're walking by my side. Long as there is love, we will stand. And keep singing. We are my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. 
There's no foe that can defeat us. We walk in side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. My brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there is love, we will stand. One more time. You're my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. Together we will walk till he comes. There's no thought that can defeat us. Walking side by side, as long as there is love, we will stand. Amen. <laughs> so at this time, I'm going to call uh, Dr. Yune <laughs> to lead us into some declarations. 